Denmark, a country consistently ranked as one of the happiest in the world. But recent controversy over immigration and a newly introduced ghetto plan threatens to damage its happy image. We would say that this is actually institutionalized racism. I've come to Denmark as they face a general election. BBC, is Danish immigration policy racist? No, of course not. To find out what impact these new laws are having. Unless you're white, you're not Danish. And what the future looks like for Denmark's half a million immigrants. I think we will actually like to help these children. We have some real problems and we don't want to have those big ghettos like you see uh, around the world. I've come to the City Hall Square in Copenhagen. It's the celebration of Iftar, the communal breaking of fast at the end of Ramadan. It's supposed to be a low-key peaceful event. It's the city square and it's completely surrounded by the police. And I'm not sure if their presence at this scale is comforting or worrying. The police are here because alongside the Eid celebration, is one of Denmark's far-right politicians, Rasmus Paludan. We think that since there are 51 Muslim countries in the world and only one Danish country, which is Denmark, it is only right that the Danes should remain in Denmark and the Muslims should go back to one of the 51 Muslim countries. We don't want it in Denmark at all. We want it uh, in the, the countries that the great President Trump has spoken about, Iraq, Iran, Syria, Libya. I've been here every year and uh, it's the first time in many years that I've seen this many cops. But he's turned it into a media circus with his hate speech. Jirwan Sarwar uh, yeah, is a Dane of Pakistani descent. He's seen a recent rise in intolerance. What do you think he's doing? Well, well he's, uh, he's speaking to the worst in uh, all of the people. But the hate speech that he's doing, if you would take out the Muslim and put in Jew, then you would have Second World War rhetoric. Tonight, Rasmus Palutin's supporters are desecrating a Quran. And the plan is to burn it. Recent changes to Danish blasphemy law mean that free speech is protected no matter how inflammatory it is. Last year, this event had a handful of um, police cops, I heard, but because of you this year, Look around. There is police everywhere, there is press everywhere. Yeah. How does it make it feel? Freedom of speech only really matters if you do something that really, really offends other people. Because if you only state something that everybody agrees with, then freedom of speech doesn't matter because nobody will react hostile towards you if you only say something they agree with. Hey, what, what are you thinking? Well, he's got a lot of insane followers and... Uh, most of them have a small scent of alcohol in their breath, and now uh, he's moved over there so that he can uh, burn the Quran. But the real aim of Paludan's stunt is to put his political party on the map at a crucial moment in Danish politics. I would say nine out of ten, just like we're just like, or we were shocked, but. Frankly, I don't care because I have my religion in my heart and I have my holy my Quran in my home, uh, elevated. And uh, as long as he's not touching that, he's not my problem. But, but he might be my problem on Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday is election day. Denmark will choose a government and give its verdict on the country's controversial ghetto plan. Last year, the government designated 29 inner city areas as ghettos. A ghetto was where more than half of an area's population is from an immigrant background, and also where crime and unemployment are higher than average, and levels of education and income are below average. The ghetto plan brought in new laws for these areas. Parents will be forced to send their children 
to Danish nursery school from the age of one. And police can impose higher penalties for crimes committed in these areas. The policy was announced by the right and center-right coalition prime minister, Lars Rasmussen. Fordi ghettoerne også sender fangearme ud på gaderne, hvor kriminelle bander skaber utryghed, og ud i samfundet, hvor danske værdier som ligeværd, frisind og tolerance taber terræn. I've come to one of Copenhagen's best-known ghettos, Mjølneparken. 80% of the people who live here are immigrants or their descendants. We're in one of the poorest and biggest ghettos in Copenhagen, and this is their community center where the community have come together to ask questions about the ghetto plan from the politicians. Crime and unemployment are higher than the national average here. Today's election candidates all say they want to improve things. So I'm a social democrat because I want to have that all children have the chance to get the best life. Sine Heldberg is standing for Denmark's opposition center-left Social Democrat Party, traditionally supportive of underprivileged communities and architects of the country's generous welfare system. But controversially, Sine's party has decided to defend the government's tough new immigration policies. Part of the ghetto plan is to remove some residents and to create a more mixed community. She went to a school where a lot of her classmates were from ghettos. And her whole argument is that kids should not be brought up in a place where the majority of adults around them are unemployed. At Denmark is the only land in the world where you have gratis lege, you have gratis school, you have gratis gymnasium, you have gratis university, you have gratis elder care. Du har gratis biblioteker, du får øh, kontanthjælp eller pension eller sygdagpenge betalt. Men overhovedet, hvis man kan arbejde, at man så gør det. Sina's words aren't going down well. Residents resent their neighborhood being called a ghetto. Det var rigtig flot ting, som du sagde. Gratis bla bla bla. Men du glemmer også, at i en flertal i Mølleparken, vi arbejder. Så vi er med til at finansiere så betyder det, at det folk, som der kan ikke gå i arbejde, så skal vi bare smitte dem ud. Jeg ved ikke, hvordan I siger, at vi vil gerne hjælpe, og så vil de hjælpe mig som mor, hvis jeg vil gerne gå og søge job. Hvis I har med at mig med en ghettopakke. Og mine børn, hvis de vil gerne søge uddannelse, er de hjælper dem med det? Fordi de bliver mere, altså, de, de kommer til at danskene, de udelukker dem fra, øh, hvordan man siger, det der... Øh, ja, fællesskab. Ja, hvordan tør jeg komme her? Jeg hørte fra en syrke, de havde haft lidt svært ved at finde en socialdemokrat, der ville komme. Synes, det er et meget, meget voldsomt skridt, det her med ghettopakken, men synes også, at vi i mange, mange år har haft integrationsproblemer. Og øh, så er det jo også at være politiker. Man skal jo også stille sig op der, hvor man ved, at det ikke er populært, det man kommer og siger. Some of the residents are leaving. Not best pleased by what they've heard. What was it that made you think that they're being racist? How were these points that you made received today? Because it didn't seem like <laughs> no, they were. No. I, I wasn't the popular vote today, no, not at all. <laughs> but, uh, but I think it's very important that I stand up for what my party believes in, and I hope people respect that. When you were doing some of your comments, a whole bunch of people left the room. They accused the ghetto plan of being racist, of being anti-immigrant, being anti-Muslim. I think the opposite. I think we will actually like to help these children. We have some real problems and we don't want to have those big ghettos like you see uh, around the world. We don't want to have that in Denmark. We would like to live together. But whatever the intention, critics of the ghetto plan point to the small print 
which they say makes it inherently divisive. We have a situation where the law says it's not such a good thing to be unemployed or to be a, a poor or to have a very low degree of education, but it's a really bad thing to be of non-Western origin. So basically, if there is a high rate of crime, unemployment, low rate of education and um, income, but you're not 50% or more immigrant, mm -hmm. the area will not be considered a ghetto. Exactly. I mean, what you're saying sounds to me like racism within the Danish system. Yes, within we Danish would say government. that this is actually institutionalized racism. Back in Mjölnöparken, two blocks have been reserved for new residents as part of the ghetto plan's program of changing the area's social profile. There are currently social housing flats. Asma has brought up her family here. I have to lie here for 10 hours every night to get my blood cleaned. I used to be able to survive just doing this, but now I have to go to the hospital every night. Asma has to go to a local hospital for her dialysis twice a week. She and her husband, Asif, have been given a year to move out from their home. We've lived here 28 years. 28 years you've lived yeah, here? All my three girls were raised here. And the, the last one's getting married next month, so... Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. So, you know, they're like... So this place it, means more to you than just a home. It's, just a, it's oh, yeah. like it's your a family home. home, you know. But when they move us out, they're saying, you can't even stay in this area. You've got to go further afield because we don't want too many foreigners in one area. Mm -hmm. That's why we're moving you out in the first place. So all the foreigners are scattered. Why would it be so bad for you to move out further away from okay, this neighborhood? For, for me, there's lots of reasons. Number one, my hospital is five minutes away. The only hospital that does dialysis here. The other one is 40 minutes away. Um, number two, my daughter has just purchased a house, not an apartment. She's bought an apartment. Three minutes walk away from here, so she'd be close. Number three, he works here. Asif works as a taxi driver, and his office is nearby. We can never ever neglect. There's no problem in Mirna Park, and there are problems. There are people, those who got the problems, those who are never on the job. They never ever got the job because they came from the war zones, they are not qualified, and they didn't even learn the Danish. But it don't mean that if they are living in a place, then we just throw them out. How do you think the society sees you? How do you think the society I think the society you? sees us as foreigners. And they always will, doesn't because we're matter, not white. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't matter how perfectly, not excellent, excellent. perfectly well you speak Danish, unless you're white, you're not Danish. Election day is not far away. I'm meeting Sina, the Social Democrat Party candidate from the community meeting. As you can see, it's lovely houses we have here, but there's like four blocks and there's the two blocks in the middle who are going to be sold because we want to have them mixed. I think, of course, there are some people living here who are sick and um, it will be hard for them to have to move. A lot of the residents that we met the other day, they were saying that no one asked them what seemed yeah. to really anger them, to seriously really concern them, worry them. They said, this decision has been made about us, our lives, our homes, our communities, and we weren't involved in it. Yeah, of course they're right. When you, uh, when you make a new law, you hear everybody, but they will not have the, I mean, you still make the law even though that they do not like it. Mm. So in that part, they were totally right. How are the elections going? <laughs> Crazy time right now in Danish politics. I think my party, the Social Democrats, are doing fine 
because actually because of we are taking uh, the concerns that people have also with immigration seriously and uh, i mean if you look uh, out on in europe you can see left uh, how right wing parties moving forward and we have seen that in denmark as well uh, and we would not like to have that we will take people's uh, concerns seriously i want to know what sina thinks about the prospects of the far right in the forthcoming elections people like Rasmus Paludan. How realistic is it that he would get elected, though? Yeah, he is, yeah, 50-50, uh, I would say. And what does that say about Denmark as a society for someone like him to have 50-50 chance of getting elected? I think it's a very bad situation for, for Denmark and very shameful as well. Freedom of speech only really matters if you do something that really, really offends them. Why did you do it to provoke okay, them so I, much that... You have to give me time right. to answer, okay? Please. I didn't know for a certainty that certain Muslims were very The video of me talking to Rasmus Paludan has now become a part of his campaign. He's uploaded it on YouTube and it's been snowballing and it's had thousands of views. He's trying to tap into the global alt-right or populist right movement and he's clearly succeeding. One of the comments says, I hope this guy gets the support he deserves in Denmark. That's a hero right there. And he needs only 2% of the people's votes to get into the parliament. Rasmus Paludan has run a campaign of provocative and offensive stunts. This is another Copenhagen ghetto. It has a significant immigrant and Muslim population. Seven weeks before the election, Rasmus Polutan has come, protected by police, to perform his Quran throwing stunt. Two men run in, trying to take their Quran from him. He is taken to safety in a police van. And for two days, police struggled with rioters incensed by Paludan's action. I've come to Norbara to meet the two young men so who rushed to stop Paludan's Quran start. One was arrested and awaits charges, while the other evaded capture. They've asked us to hide their identities. <laughs> Vi kunne godt have, have skadet ham. Altså, vi havde muligheder, så, der, så vi godt kunne have brugt vold, som han gerne vil have. Hvis vi gør noget, gør noget forkert, så repræsenterer vi ikke bare os to. Vi repræsenterer næsten alle muslimer. Fordi der er nogle danskere ude i f.eks. Jylland og mange andre steder. De har ikke set så mange muslimer før og indvandrere. Så hvis vi går ind og gør noget forkert, så giver vi også et dårligt billede af flere muslimer. You were born in Danmark. You came to Danmark when you were very, very young. How Danish do you think the government and the white Danes, the majority of them, see you? Altså, på medier og sådan noget der, så virker det, altså, så, så er det meget, altså, jeg kan ikke sige, så, så er det meget hård imod indvandrere over, at alle ikke arbejder, og alle ikke går i skole, og alle er kriminelle og sådan noget der. Men der er, stor del, ja, altså, der er en stor del, som tager den her, altså det er så stemseriøst, som går i skole, og som passer, hvad det skal passe. How does that make you feel? Altså, nu, nu er min familie, de flygtede fra deres land, til et helt fremmed land og prøver at bygge vores liv op. Og altså, de, de flygtede fra deres egen familie, altså. Altså, deres familie der, de, 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 de mange af dem er døde. Og så, så, så kommer vi til et land, hvor man ikke føler sig værdsat som. If you could go back in time, would you do this again? Det vil jeg ikke. Fordi det her, det padros, øh, men det tog, det havde mange konsekvenser efterfølgende. Og det var så, at efter det her skete, så, tænkte, så havde han lige pludselig, så var der folk, der lyttede til ham. Folk begyndte at... Han fik meget mere af det der... Hvad hedder det? Opmærksomhed. Ja, opmærksomhed. Det, det rigtige, man skulle gøre i den her situation, det er jo, at man skal bare vende ryggen til, og give ham så lidt opmærksomhed som muligt. Altså, Men det der, i det øjeblik, så var det, at det var følelserne tog over. It's finally polling day. 
the centre-right and right-wing coalition government that brought in the ghetto plan is facing the electorate. Two new far-right parties, including Ghazmas Paludans, are attempting to get into parliament for the first time. And the Social Democrat Party, out of government for four years, are hoping that supporting the ghetto plan will help them win back power. It's approaching midnight, and I've come to the parliament building where the candidates are waiting for the results. Already, something seems to be happening. This area has been allocated to Rasmus Plotin's party, and this is actually where he's been waiting. Why can't we? Why are we not allowed to go inside? Because they don't want the visitors. Why is that? Do you know? No, I just don't know. You don't know? No. Okay. It's almost midnight and 98% of the votes have been counted. Asmus Palutin has only received 1.8% of the votes. There is no way he's now going to get into the parliament. Suddenly, we spot him. But he's less talkative than he was at the city square. The winners of the night are the Social Democrats. Seen as party leader, Mette Frederiksen, will almost certainly become the new prime minister. It's a new political program for the country, with a key ingredient from before. It's a great is celebrating the victory of her party. Thank you. Um, what, what do you think this means? Uh, well, I, ho I hope for a new direction in Denmark, of course. Yeah. And in terms of integration, the ghetto plan, where do you yeah, think? Yeah, but, but she said that uh, right now, that uh, she's standing on that uh, same perspective as she has done all the way through. Which so the, the, the ghetto plan will be uh, continued. The cross-party support for the ghetto plan means it's unlikely to be stopped anytime soon. BBC, is Danish immigration policy racist? No, of course not. Denmark's elections saw support for populist parties fall and the far right failed to enter parliament. But around 80% of voters chose parties which support the ghetto plan. For many of the country's immigrants, concerns about their place in Denmark continue to grow. <laughs>